Hey friends, welcome back to the Makers Gonna Learn YouTube channel. In today's video, not only do we have an amazing offer for you, but we are going to be making three DIY Christmas ornaments that you need to make this holiday season. The amazing offer that we have for you guys today is an opt-in offer where all you have to do is give us your email and you get 100 free cut files automatically. If you don't know who we are or what we do, Makers Gonna Learn is a craft education business where we bring you inspiration, motivation, and education to get your Cricut out of the box and master using it. If you decide that you want these 100 free cut files and you think, oh my gosh, this is so amazing, but you want to join the Makers Gonna Learn family, we offer so much more. We have thousands of cut files available on our website as, as well as hundreds of fonts that are free to you. Not only do we have cut files and fonts, but we also have courses that you can take to help master your Cricut. Now I hope you're ready to go ahead and jump into our projects and start making these three DIY Christmas ornaments. Here we have a sample of what we're going to be making today. We have this cute little Jenga block ornament. We have a wood burned, wood round ornament, as well as a little shadow box, snow globe type ornament that we're going to be making. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump into the supplies for this or these ornaments, but we're gonna go one by one the supplies for each separate ornament. First, we're gonna start with the supplies for our Jenga block ornament. Now these are just the mini Jenga blocks that you can get at the Dollar Tree. Um, that's where we got these. I'm sure you can find some of these on Amazon, but we have the Jenga blocks that we're going to be using as well as our red permanent vinyl. We have some white chalk paint that we're going to be painting the Jenga blocks with. We have our twine that we're going to be using for the hanger, as well as the little jingle bells and wooden beads that we're going to thread onto that. We have just a plain piece of cardstock paper that we're going to be using as kind of like a backing for this to glue our jingle blocks to. And of course, we're gonna be using a light grip mat as well as Caesar transfer tape. Now for our next ornament, which is the wood round, of course we have the wooden blanks. Now these come from Amazon, and as you can tell, they don't have a hole in the top, so we do have to use a drill to drill the hole in the top if you want it to go through. If you don't want to use a drill, you would be fine just to hot glue this to the back, um, hot glue your twine to the back, that would be fine. For the actual wood burning portion, we are going to be using just some scrap permanent vinyl as well as torch paste. And what we're going to do is we will paint this on with our stencil down on our wood round. And then we are going to use our heat gun to heat that up and burn that into the wood. Of course, when cutting your stencil out of vinyl, you're going to need your light grit mat and some transfer tape. But we also have this sanding block. This is about, um, this is a very fine grit sanding block. We're going to give this a light sand. We're gonna give our wood round a light sand before we put on the torch paste. That way the torch paste can get in the rings of this wood round and really help give a nice even look. Finally, the supplies for our last ornament are the shadow box ornament. As you can see, I have already started another one with like different things on the inside. And this is the cool thing about this ornament is you really can customize it and make it however you want. The base of this ornament is we started with this Dollar Tree uh, it says magnet box. We found this in the school supplies. Um, so you can find, it, if you can find anything, any kind of box like this that has the clear opening in the front would work perfect for this ornament. Um, for this ornament, I have, this is some glitter felt material. You can use cardstock. In this ornament, we just use cardstock in the back. I just thought this one was a lot brighter, so I plan on using that for my little snowman ornament. To make my snowman, I just have three wooden beads that I'm going to paint and hot glue together. For this one, we just used a little bottle tree as well as some little fluffy um, batting for the snow and jingle bells. But for this one, we're gonna use the flaky um, fake snow as well as our permanent vinyl that we're gonna put on the front, our light grip mat and transfer tape. Now that we've gone over all of the supplies, 
let's measure our ornaments so we know the dimensions that we can work with in Design Space. So let's start with this ornament. And what you want to do is you want to measure from inside to inside on the clear, so the clear space is what you want to measure because that's where our um, vinyl is going to go. So it looks like we have about three inches in diameter for this circle. So we're gonna hop over into Design Space. We are going to grab a shape, I'm going to grab the circle, and then I'm going to change that to three inches and then turn this into a guide. Now back over here, we have this circle. Now it is not a perfect circle. As you can see, this way it looks to be about uh, three and a quarter, but then when we turn it this way, it's a little over three and a half. So we are gonna go with three and a quarter, the smallest to be on the safe size, as, side. As you all know, natural wood like this a lot of times doesn't come perfectly symmetrical. So we are actually gonna go with the three and a quarter measurement. So once again, we're gonna hop back over here to Design Space. We are going to grab a shape, the circle. We are going to change this to 3.25. And then once again, change this into a guide. So we have our two circle ornaments in here as guides now. So now that we have the two circles, the guides in Design Space, we are going to assemble our Jenga block ornament what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of cardstock paper and I'm actually gonna cut it pretty long um, because I want to make sure I have plenty of area to work with when placing these Jenga blocks. And now what we're gonna do is we're just going to kind of line these up on our cardboard or cardstock paper. Now if you wanted to, you can have these all the same all the way across. You can stagger them, whichever one you want, but we're gonna start out on one side and we are going to place our glue here and then we are going to place our Jenga block down and you really want to try to get it as straight as possible here because this is going to be the start of your ornament. Then we're just going to come in here, do another line of glue. Then I think I wanna go down just a little bit with this one. Now we are working with seven of these in a row. However, you can do as many as you would like. It doesn't have to stop at seven. We just did seven to begin with. And as you can see, I have some extra over here. So if I wanted to do another one, I could, but you don't have to. What we're just gonna do is I'm just gonna come in here and cut the edge of that off. Now, as you can see, it's stuck there, but it still kind of bends this way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to add some hot glue here and really adhere these Jenga blocks to each other. Now that we've got all of that glue down, I'm just gonna come in here with our sanding block and kind of sand away some of that extra glue that we've got going on here which will also give us a good layer to start with our paint. Now that we have that glued together, next step, I'm going to get my measurements. So we're working with about four and a half inches and we'll go with um, about one and a quarter inch in height because you have to go from your lowest one on the top to your highest one on the bottom. So we'll go from here to here which gives us about um, an inch and three quarter to work with. So we will hop over here into Design Space. We're going to grab a shape. We'll grab our square. We're going to unlock it. We said four and a half inches in width, so 4.5 in width. And we're gonna go down to about 1.75 in height. And then once again, we are going to turn this into a guide. Now, before we start actually putting our designs in our guides in Design Space, 
I'm going to paint this ornament so that it has plenty of time to dry while I'm working on that and cutting my vinyl. So first thing, we're going to be working with the StarCraft Chalk Mineral Paint, and I'm going to paint our ornament, our Jenga block ornament next. So we're just going to take this chalk paint, now it doesn't have to be the StarCraft brand, and we're just going to give this ornament a nice even coat all the way across. Now we're really going for the distressed look with this, so you need to have a make sure that it's covered however if you miss some spots that just adds to the distressed look that we are going for so we're just going to give this a good coating and then after it's dry we will actually just come back in here with our sanding block that we just used and we may distress a couple places So since we are going for the distressed look, it really doesn't matter. You don't have to go one way or the other with this. We're just making sure that we have a good coat on all sides that you can see. Now that that's painted, we're going to hop over into Design Space and size our designs for these ornaments and cut them with the Cricut. So for our first ornament, which was the shadow box ornament, I'm going to be using a cut file that says let it snow so we are going to go to upload I have already uploaded these from our website this will be part of the 100 free cut files that you get this is going to be our shadow box ornament then we are going to use the antlers for our wood burning and then the happy holidays for our Jenga block ornament so we're going to select all three of those and add those to canvas Obviously this pulls up very, very large, so it has the Happy Holiday selected first. If you look up here at the top, this is actually unlocked, so we're gonna make sure we lock that, and then I'm going to size this down to three inches, okay? Then I'm going to move this over here. I actually sized all of these down on accident. Here is our Let It Snow, our Antlers, and our Happy Holidays. So this is what I want to do with the Happy Holidays. I think that this would be great to kind of move around and manipulate so that holidays can be larger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup both of these. I'm going to move my Happy over here, select my Holidays, make it larger so that you can see it better, and then maybe even turn our Happy a little bit. I might size this down just a smidgen, move it back over, and I really think this is going to look good on our Jenga block, so what we're going to do from there, let's actually size this down just a smidgen more, pull it down, and then what we're going to do is we are going to select both of them, Happy and Holidays, and then we are going to weld those together. That way that cuts exactly like that to fit on our Jenga blocks. Next, uh, this is the deer antler. We are just going to size it to fit our wood round ornament. So I think that looks pretty good. And then we are going to size our Let It Snow. I actually want it kind of toward the side because I want you to be able to see my um, snowman over here in the corner. So I really like the placement there. So once you have done that, you are going to be ready to cut. We are cutting this on a Maker 3. However, you can cut this. Really, you can cut this on any um, Cricut. You can cut this on a Joy, on an Explorer series machine or a maker series machine we just have a maker here in our studio so we're going to click make it because these are all three different colors on our mat they are going to cut different which works out perfect for us because i am cutting them all three on different color vinyl so first up we have our happy holidays which is going to go on our jenga blocks so we are going to click continue we are going to select our device that is connected via USB. I'm going to cut this on the premium vinyl removable mat with default pressure. 
We're going to load this into our Cricut. Now one good thing about chalk paint is it tends to dry pretty quick, but I'm needing this to dry very quick. So I'm just gonna take a heat gun and we're gonna run this over this chalk paint really quick to give it a good dry, to make sure it's really good and dry. Once that is good and dry, what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab our sanding block and then I'm just gonna come in here and kind of give this a little bit of a distressed look. Now our Cricut has cut our Happy Holidays. I'm going to take it off the mat. And we will weed that in just a second. This is a good way to really test your efficiency is doing multiple projects at the same time. So before I weed that, up next I have the Let It Snow coming up. So I'm going to add this vinyl to my mat. I'm going to make sure that it is burnished down really well. Now, for a high shine vinyl like this, I really like using a rolling burnishing tool. I feel like if I use the squeegee burnishing tool, it gives me a lot of like scrapes on the vinyl that I don't personally like. So with this vinyl, I do like using this rolling burnishing tool. Now I'm going to hop over back into design space. I'm going to browse all material. I'm going to scroll down to the vinyl and I am going to select holographic vinyl. From there I'm going to load it into our Cricut and before I cut that I'm actually going to come back to design space I'm just going to give this more pressure just because I think I'm, this holographic vinyl can sometimes be pretty tricky to work with. So I'm just going to give it more pressure before I hit the play button and then I will hit that play button. While that is cutting, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to weed out our happy holiday, holidays. We almost lost our S. So I'm going to hold that. We're going to weed the middle of this out. And then we're just going to place this bad boy back down. Now that that is weeded, I'm just going to cut my transfer tape, lay it down, burnish it. Pull it up and place it on our ornament. And we will finish the hanger here in just a minute. So we're going to move this to the side. We're going to unload this from our Cricut. Okay, so one thing I want to show you guys, this vinyl that I'm using is actually a tech wrap vinyl and I continually forget that they have a film over top of their vinyl, which is great for this holographic vinyl because the film protects it from getting scratched. So I forgot to take that off. So if you are using tech wrap vinyl, make sure you take this film off before you cut. The good part about it is because where I added more pressure, I'm pretty sure this still cut through beautifully. So we're try still trying to take this film off of the front. Okay, so it did not cut any of it. So what we're gonna do, we're just going to place this back on our mat and we'll just cut it on this other corner. Once again, using our burnishing tool to roll this on so that we do not get any scratches on this vinyl. And then we're just going to go back and design space back to this one. 
uh, browse all material, we will type in holographic, holographic vinyl, we're going to put it on more pressure, and we're going to send that through to cut again. So while that is cutting, we are going to prepare our ornament. As you can see, I have already added our elements, but I'm going to tell you exactly what I did. So first thing, I took my sparkle material, I turned it over, and all I did was trace that around on the back, and I hand cut that out. And you can see where I did this. It was just easier to trace this on the back and cut it, hand cut it out instead of sending that through the Cricut. Once I cut that out, I placed it in the back, I hot glued that down, and then I started making my little snowman. Now this is where I really want you guys to get creative. I made a snowman out of wooden beads that we had sitting around because I didn't want to necessarily order anything new just specifically for just one ornament. So all you do is you're gonna take your wooden beads and I hot glued them down. So we'll start with this one. Add our bead there, and then added hot glue to this one, placed it down for the top, and then I just painted our little snowman white. After I painted him white, I cut out a little top hat out of cardstock paper, glued him in there, and added our fake snow. So you really can do whatever you want in these ornaments. If you want to put a picture on the back, that would be great. Um, we had a bottle tree, so we wanted to make a snowy scene with the Christmas tree in it for this one. So really this one is up to your interpretation. We just wanted to give you a couple different options. So after you have made your inside for your ornament, we are going to place our top back on. We're going to grab our true control knife and I'm just going to slice this corner out. And then we are going to weave that. Okay, so now that this is weeded, we actually had to go back. I wanted to let you guys know, for this holographic tech wrap vinyl, we had to go back and cut this again on permanent vinyl. I think I cut it on the permanent vinyl pearl with more pressure, and it weeded a lot easier than the first time. So now we're just going to add our transfer tape and pull this up. And then bring this over here and we are going to place it here. And once that is down, if you want to, you can glue the front of this on there. But to add our little hanger, what we're going to do is we are going to take our drill we are going to very slowly, you want to make sure your ornament is the right side up. Very slowly, we are going to take our drill and just drill through the top, pull it back out. We are then going to take our ribbon, put it together, and thread it through. This is one reason why I don't necessarily like gluing it down, especially until you are completely finished. So we're going to pull this through. I'm just going to tie this off. Then once we have tied that, we're going to come back in with our scissors, cut off this excess, Pull it to the top, put our front back on, 
And there you go. Now for our final ornament, we are going to do the wood burning ornament. We are going to load our vinyl into our Cricut. We are cutting this on removable mat, default pressure. And while that is cutting, we are going to give our wood round a nice sand on the front, get our stencil off of the Cricut, and then cut it. Now we're going to weed this out. Now one thing you need to remember, because this is a stencil, we are weeding out the negative space. So now we're just going to once again grab our transfer tape. And this transfer tape has actually been used. This is our third time using it in this video alone. So we're going to grab our transfer tape, burnish this down, pull up this design, and place it on our wood round. Now we're just going to make sure the edges of this stencil are nice and tight. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come in with a paintbrush and some torch paste and we're going to give this a nice even layer. Now the important thing with torch paste is you don't want it to be um, very thick. You want it to be a nice even thin layer to get really good crisp clean lines. Otherwise, if it is too thick, like that area right there was way too thick, so scooping it up and moving it over, if you don't get it, if it's not super thin, all it's going to do is like bubble up on your um, wood round that you are doing, and it's just going to look like charcoal. So a nice, good, thin layer. Once you have that layer down, we're going to close our torch paste back up, stick our, our brush in water, then we are going to pull our stencil up off of our wood round. From there, we're going to grab our heat gun. I like to start out on low, let it get heated up, and then you can turn it to high, but we're not going to get super close. We're going to still stay pretty far away from this, and then the, the thing about this is doing a slow heat. You don't want it to get too hot too fast. So we're just going to burn this and you can see how quickly it burns. And once you have finished, one thing about these wood pieces is it may warp just a little bit. As you can see, the heat kind of warped that. If you have the time to do it on a lower heat setting, you can and it will not warp as much. Um, but once you have done that, we are going to come in with our drill. We are going to put a hole through the top. back it back out and then we are going to add our little twine detail and then you will tie it off. And then to finish off the last one, if you want to thread on some jingle bells you can or the wood beads, but I'm just going to show you how we finish this off. So what all we're going to do from the back we're going to take our hot glue gun. We are going to glue our piece of twine on here. I'm going to add some glue to the top. Same for this side. Place it down. Add some glue to the top. And you're finished. I know this has been a lot. We have done a lot of different things. They are simple things, but it has still been a lot. I really hope that you enjoyed this. These DIY ornaments are so cute and so easy to make. And really you can make them with things that you probably already have laying around your house. Now don't forget for that opt-in offer for you to get 100 free cut files if you are not a Makers Gonna Learn member, 
All you have to do is click the link below, give us your email, and you get 100 free cut files sent to your inbox automatically. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, subscribe to our channel, hit that bell notification so that you don't miss out on any handmade holiday projects that we have coming your way. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.